Well, welcome back to week four of your small group. I hope that you're enjoying new levels of relationships in this environment by now. I wanna encourage you to continue to press in. In your times of talking through the questions, get real. Get open about what God is saying to you and what he's speaking to you and watch what he does with the relationships in this room. Okay, let's get started so we can make time for you to do just that. Let's quickly recap. In our first week, we talked about DNA number one, people matter to God. Followed by number two, your destiny is tied to your relationships. And last week we discovered uh, that character is more important than charisma in DNA number three. And this Sunday, we introduced our fourth. The local church is the hope of the world. There were days when I was younger that I thought more or less that the church was hopeless rather than it being the hope of the world. It's so easy to get your eyes off of the target. Growing up, I, I watched this happen so many times. It was, it was hard to really see anything worth giving my life to as I was a young man. I wanted to do something that was effective. I mentioned last week that music was my avenue in my head. And honestly, I just wanted to make a difference in life. I wanted to see life change, like real life change. When I read the book of Acts, which share the stories of the early church, the pages are filled with life change. People getting saved, spiritual family being built, people living sacrificially and missionally, intimacy, unity, humility. Man, I wanted to see that in my lifetime. And the truth is that the church has a mission, the Great Commission. That's still the call. It hasn't changed. So why do we see such a difference between the church of today and the church that we read in the book of Acts? I just knew there was something more. When I grew up in the church, I, I just didn't see it. And my wife, B and I, we had this burden to build a place where the city would feel it if we had to shut our doors for whatever reason. And it was through the process of experiencing spiritual family when a church that didn't have to invest in us chose to invest in us. I remember walking into that church, Milestone Church. I felt health. I felt the feeling that I would feel while I was reading the book of Acts. And I remember thinking, it can be done. So we got to work building that church in Longview, a church that would one day be a resource to other churches, one that would be missional and reach the lost, where people were getting saved, where they could stay and build on top of salvation and become fully devoted followers of Christ, a place where marriages could be restored, prodigal children would come home, and spiritual family could be built. It started in a room of 75 people. I remember when our goal for Easter Sunday morning attendance was smaller than what our current children's ministry runs every week. Guys, let me say something. It's not about the numbers, but each number is a person and each person has a face and a name and each of them matters to God. We have watched God do it through B, through myself, and through the amazing leaders and volunteers that God has joined to this family at Grace Creek Church. You see, the church isn't just worship services or Bible studies. It's not just something you go to as a family on the weekends. The church isn't a white building with a steeple. The church is disciples. The disciples are the church. It takes you. It takes me. It takes us coming together, being used by the Holy Spirit of God to bring the good news and the hope to the world around us. God uses people and there are no shortcuts. It takes ministry. Let me say something about people. I've learned that people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And the truth is that we all want to experience being cared for. Now, God could swoop out of heaven with an angel if he wanted to and bring you a word of encouragement in that time of need or that coaching that you need, whatever it might be. But in all of his wisdom, God decided to use people. It was a phone call for me from someone that loved me saying, if you don't quit, I won't let you fail. I believe in you. Gosh, I remember that moment. I was instantly filled with encouragement and faith. And as a result of that phone call conversation, you are sitting here today. People, 
people make the difference. The church is the hope of the world. It takes maturity, which by the way, is more caught than it is taught. And you see, the church is a safe place where we're gonna love people right where they are. We're gonna love them with unconditional love just as Jesus loves us. And then finally, maximum impact. Let me remind you that God didn't connect us all together for potluck dinners, baby showers, or even Bible studies. No, He connected us together for maximum impact. He connected us together to use us for His glory. And we've decided at Grace Creek Church that we're going to take the good from what we've learned from the churches of our past, and we're just going to grow. We're going to build on top of it. We're going to keep the gospel front and center. We're going to keep making disciples because God has invited us and entrusted us with a role to play in His work of redemption for all of mankind. There is no plan B. You and I were His plan A. We've got to do the job that we were given to do. And we're here today because of the men and women that came before us who prioritized the Great Commission, starting with the 12 disciples. We've got to carry it on. We've got to carry this work on for the ones that are coming behind us. And I want to pray for you now as you just think about that, that word for just a moment. Everybody in the room, bow your heads for just a second. Father, I'm thankful for this conversation that we're about to have. I pray that your spirit be in this room as we talk about how the local church is the hope of the world. Father, I'm thankful that you've chosen to build us the way you have. I'm thankful for the people that you've placed in my life. I'm thankful for spiritual family. I'm better. I'm a better husband. I'm a better father. I'm a better friend. I'm a better pastor because of the family you've placed around me. Lord, I pray for a revelation of that right now in these small groups, in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Hey, I'm praying for you and I want you to enjoy your time together.